I am not going to preach today. I am going to teach today. Is that okay? Yeah, he's like, let me see you do that, Pastor, right? So I'm going to do my best to teach today. And I need a, um, can you hear me? Thank you. And um, I'm going to try and teach today. And in your, I even got notes for you. And the first part of your notes is our identity as gospel people. Now, for the last three weeks, um, Rajiv is going to make sure this gets on the uh, internet, on our web page, where you can look to the Andy sermon uh, that he taught, and the Tina sermon, and this one today. If you would look, read those, or, or go view those again, you will see where we are going as a church family. All right? Say, so what, Pastor, what are we doing? What is what's the vision of Capital City? The vision of Capital City Church is this, that we become gospel people. Amen? That we love each other like a family. That we, that we serve each other unconditionally and the world around us, and that we make disciples for the kingdom of God, Matthew 28. That we teach people about Jesus, that we help them grow in Jesus. We, even the people in this room, that we challenge each other to grow in our faith so we can be like Jesus everywhere we go. In our business decisions, in our everyday life, in everything that we do, we want to be like Jesus. Why? Because that's what God commanded us to do. Now, it's not easy. Come on. Look at, look at, we're talking, uh, doing the Constitution of Bibles, how the churches have changed over the years, allowing certain things and worldly ideas and to be part of the church culture, right? I, I, and we can just talk about uh, gay marriage. We have now denominations, uh, religious organizations, allowing pastors and ministers and this would be an acceptable behavior. It's not an acceptable behavior as far as I know as much as I've read in the Word of God. Does God love other people that are in sin? Yes. yes. Is gay, gay people any different than any other sin? It is not. It is not. It's like every other sin. I'm preaching now and I'm getting off my nose, but that's okay. Um, I'm telling you, because we have to love everybody. Because how can people be drawn, even religious people, people that are all stuck in religion, they can come out of the religion and come to Christ because the love that you have for them. Amen? So when I just argue with people about this, I just go to the gospel. What did Jesus say? Oh, he says if you can look at a woman, it's like already committing adultery. I had a friend of mine call me, and I'll get to this in just a second. Turn to First Peter, chapter uh, two. Uh, I had a friend of mine call me the other day. He's a, a, a Jewish. He's, he's a, what do you call it? A converted Jew, completed Jew, uh, whatever you know. So he's telling me, and he's a friend from high school. So this we know, I've known him for a long time, and. Uh, he would start telling me how uh, we have to teach the Torah. 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 And he'd tell me how well, Jesus taught the Torah. And I said, no, no, no. I didn't argue with him on the phone because I don't like arguing on the phone. I want to see him, so I invite him for coffee. So we have to teach the things of God. Like, what does the Torah teach us? What does the Old Testament teach us? It teaches what sin is. It teaches what we're not supposed to do. It, 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 it's a, it brings revelation of what we're not supposed to do. But Jesus added to that. He added to that. He says, if you commit adultery with a woman, then they stoned you outside the city, right? But Jesus said, listen, I'm going to take this a little further. If you even look or think on a woman or a man, if you can go both ways, uh, you've committed adultery already in your heart. So he added to that. So there's more. There's more of uh, uh, the Beatitudes. Let's teach those things. Let's understand the, the power of God in our lives and the gospel that Jesus wants us to have in us and through us so we can emulate the very essence of God in everything we do. Amen? That's what we're supposed to do. All right? And, but learn. Study the Old Testament. Study the books of the law. Study the, 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 uh, the prophets. Study the, the Psalms and the Proverbs. Study all those things. You need to. You'll get the essence of the Father. Understand God's love. I mean, His grace and His peace and, and what He wanted. He didn't want this. He didn't want to. Sodom and Gomorrah, He didn't want to destroy them. That wasn't in the Father's heart to do that. That's not the very character of God to stop somebody out because they're saying, no, He wanted to restore them within their heart. They hardened their heart toward God and, and He had to do that because He, wanted, he didn't want that to, 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 to spread throughout the rest of the world. God loves you and me. So, as gospel people, look at this is the church, this is our church, and this is what I want us to grow into, and I think we're, we're there, some of us, in some essence, we're here, and some essence, we're still growing. Is that okay? We're still learning. 
I'm still learning to, to be this, and so I hope you are too. The church, look on the back of your notes, the last page on the bottom. I put in bold letters right there. It says, we go to church. We don't go to church. We are the church. All right? Just remember, put that in your thinker as we go through this. We are the church. Not this building, not these chairs, not the parking lot, not this location. We are the church. Amen? The church is a family of servant missionaries. Now, uh, yeah, so we're a family. Remember, uh, Christopher, uh, Andy shared, he said family is uh, under the Father. We're adopted into the family of God. We're servants because Jesus came to serve. Right? You came to serve and we're supposed to serve. And missionaries, because the Holy Spirit is in you now, empowering you with the gospel message so you go out and tell people about this great message that you have hope and peace and love and forgiveness. Come on, where else in the world can you be so messed up in your life, like I was, and then I had a revelation of who Jesus was and what he did for me, and then I changed my life, and then God called me to do this. Crazy. Only God can do this. I didn't pick this profession. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is way beyond me. I can't do this. But God through me can. And I bow in the office before I came out here. I said, God, again, would you allow me to speak into the hearts of the people so that we encourage to be the family of God, the servants and missionaries that you call us to be here in Madison, Wisconsin, or wherever you're from or going. All right? Because wherever we are, that's where our mission field is wherever we are. Amen? Wherever you are, that's your mission field. The people around you are people you're supposed to love into submission so they can come to the full knowledge of Christ. Let me say that again. pretty good. <laughs> Amen? I thought I was pretty good. The people that you're around are people you're supposed to love into submission to the fullness of Christ. Amen? And we love each other, and we love each other, and we'll all encourage each other to be in the fullness of Christ, like it says in Ephesians. See, we have Christ in us, as we are, most of us here are believers, so now we have to come into the fullness of Christ. And how do you come into the fullness of Christ to know who you are? So let's go back to uh, family here. And for uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, and um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says this. Um, let me go back to... Uh, to okay. Let's just start with verse 9. But you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you were not uh, received, once you, uh, once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Can you say, praise the Lord? Huh? Praise the Lord. This is who we are. We are a a chosen people. When everybody is chosen, you have to choose not to serve God. Right? So once you come to a knowledge of Christ, once you understand who Jesus is, then you are come, you come into the light. You come become part of, a part of God. And the darkness in your life begins to diminish. How many know that sometimes it takes a while to get rid of some of the darkness in our lives? Amen? Especially if you have, especially if you have unforgiveness in your heart. Especially if somebody hurts you in the past. You say, well, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. But God, I still, I, every time I think about this person, I, I get angry. How do I overcome the anger? Because it says we're here. You can say, I'm a, children, I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm in the light now, and I don't have to serve darkness. So I ask God to help me to get rid of... Um, I, this is something I dealt with. I don't know about you, if anybody here does that. I had to deal with some unforgiveness. I had a pastor friend of mine hurt me very, very bad. The person I trusted, the person I loved, the person I served with all my heart, help with his ministry, all these things that we did. And all of a sudden, he, he, he just hurt us, my whole family. So I had anger. And after I had the anger, as I came up to Madison to be pastor, I don't know, and I was up here one day preaching. I was up here, I remember the day, standing here saying, you need to forgive people. And the Holy Spirit tells me, well, what about this person? I said, by name. He told me as I was preaching. I'm like, oh, well... Yes, God, I forgive him too. He says, no, you haven't. And I said, okay, I have. I mean, I'm having this conversation with God while I'm preaching on unforgiveness. So I wound up calling that person, telling him everything that I felt, and please forgive me for feeling bad about that. And I know it's not his fault, and I just asked him to forgive him. And as soon as I did, the, the, the presence of God filled my heart, and that something broke, that chain of unforgiveness broke in me. 
And I, now I can think about that person and I can pray for them. Some, some real saintly person told me, just pray for them every day. Well, I couldn't pray for them. I wanted to pray for them because I knew it was the right thing, but I couldn't. But then when that broke, I was able to pray for them now in their ministry. Amen? And God can do that for you. So look at this. We're different. We think different. We do things different. You, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. What does that mean? That means that you, Jesus was not only the Son of God, he was also the, the high priest. And he said, you are a priesthood. You are a people that serve me. You have, you're, you're, you're a holy people. There's nothing impure in you because of Jesus. Come on, you got to believe that. Come on. When I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins, he washed me and cleansed me and made me whole. And those priests had to wash their hands and wash their feet and they had to wash their garments before they actually went into the very presence of God. That's why it's good to read the Old Testament because you know about the temple and how the priests had to dress. But God said, you are that person. So God, I say, cleanse me. Make my hands clean. Make my feet clean. Make my mouth clean. Make everything clean so I can be a representation of who you are in the world. Hallelujah. Come on, say amen. I know it's good. Good stuff. God wants us to be his, his example. I don't care where, what country, what state, what, what uh, neighborhood you live in. I don't care where. You are to be an example to the world around you that God, that Jesus is real and alive. Amen? Let's turn to uh, uh, 1 John, or John chapter 1. We are the family of God. His children were adopted and fully accepted by His love. We do not uh, work to be justified. We are justified because of Him. Amen? This is First John, or John chapter 1, and we're verse 11 through 13. It says, uh, He came to that which was His own, but His own received Him not. What does that mean, somebody? Okay, he came to the Jewish people first. Okay, that's what he did. He came to the Jewish people and said, Hey, I'm the Messiah. They said, No, you're not. Okay? That's what they said. Ah, I don't believe you. All right? And then he said, Yet to all who receive him, to those who become, believe in his name, he, he gave them the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor human is, uh, this, uh, decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. We are God's family. We are born into his family. We are part of his family because of the Holy Spirit in us. Amen? So God came to us. And he said, listen, if you believe in me, you are part of my family. Now, I have an identity. I have a father that loves me. I have a father that is perfect. Think about that. Our Heavenly Father is perfect. He won't disappoint us. We don't have to earn His trust. We don't have to show up every Sunday to say, Oh, I checked. I've been to church. I paid my tithes. I helped my neighbor. I don't have to. It's, and then I'm looking for some kind of a, a pat on the back from the pastor or from some of the leaders in the church, right? We don't have that anymore. Because now I do things because my Father loves me and I do it because His love is, is continuous. I do it now because my identity is not because of what I do, it's because of who I am. Right? Tina taught on that last week. It's not because our identity is not about our accomplishments, but I am a child of God because Jesus paid the price for my sins. And all I have to do is believe. It's called faith. Right? Um, let's go back there. It, it's called, I, it's simply believing of what he did was true. I don't know when it happened for you, but I remember when it happened for me. That moment when I was a religious, I grew up in a Catholic church, I grew up as an altar boy, uh, we went to church on Easter, what did you call that, Elizabeth, it was Christmas and Easter people? Christers? Christers. Uh, you know, they go to Christmas and Easter, we were talking about yesterday. And so, uh, that's what my grandma would do, you know, and I would once in a while go to the, Catholic, the priest's house, we lived in a small town, for confession on Saturday, you know, all that kind of stuff, but I never knew Jesus. I had no, I, I, I went and saw the, the, uh, the, their version of the, uh, uh, the, the cross, uh, what do you call it, the crucifixion, you know, they show all the young, us young kids that, we got scared to death, scared us right out of hell, out of hell right into heaven, you know, it was like, freaked us out, freaked me out anyway, 
You know, uh, the, you ever see The Passion of Christ? Anybody seen that movie? That, I, I saw it once, I said, I'm not going to see it again. You know, that Jesus would do that, and that was just a movie. I mean, it, maybe it was probably more horrific than that. But anyway, I just can't. But anyway, but I, when that day, when I was in trouble, when I was in, I was actually in jail, when I was down to, I mean, I was not, no hope left, nothing in this world. You know, I was scum of the earth at that point, and then revelation came that Jesus loved me. Amen? Because I was reading the Word of God, Old Testament, Genesis and Exodus. And when I got to Exodus, I thought God was really cool. I mean, I was in the military, so that, that God just wiped out all these bad people. And yes, and I kept reading and reading and reading, and then I realized the love that God has for those people is just, I don't know, just, it just blew my mind. I sat there and said, yes, I, and faith, at that moment, faith welled up in me, and I said, yes, God, you're real. Jesus, you're real. And it changed my life. And that's what God has continued. That's why you have to build your faith up. Build and encourage each other in the faith. And that's what I'm trying to do this morning. Build us up in faith. So we're, we're adopted into the family of God. Amen? And he is now our father. So um, on your statement, on their family, I don't know if it's on the notes. Let me see. Do we have in there? It says, uh, we are children of God who care for each other as Family. So when we say family in this statement here for us, that means in this room and the people that are here today, they are our spiritual family. All right. So if we're our, if we're family, so we have natural families, and some of those people we don't like. Um, you know, we're a natural family. You know, our brothers, sisters, our uncles, aunts. You know, crazy people. But in spiritual family, we're required to love one another and care for one another. Go like this. Love one another, care for another one. What happens if a church, the church, us, begin to really take on that caring and loving and nurturing and 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 just that that love that you know you can't get. I mean, look at our church. We got such a diversity of people, even in a small group. You say, well, hey, I don't really care about your cult. I care that you're a brother and sister in Christ. Right? I, I don't care about your background. I don't care about your history. I don't care what you did wrong. But listen, you're a brother. So what do you have need of? What, what can I help you with? Right? And you'll see everybody in this church, even in a small group we have now, you, people are calling each other. They're helping each other. It's just really kind of cool. And we want to continue to develop it. Because when the world, as we begin to grow, as we begin to reach out to the world, they're going to see that. There's something different about uh, the people at Capital City Church or the family of God here that's located at 401 North Blackhawk Avenue. Right? So I, when I tell people um, what church you go to, I, I don't go to church. I am the church. I'm learning to do that. I mean, I'm not perfect at it. I guess I want to say Capital City Church at 401 North Blackhawk Avenue, right? But we are the church. So what do you need help with? If they ask that question, they're, they're searching for spiritual identity. They don't know what they believe in. Maybe they, they are new to the, the uh, Madisons or looking for a place to fellowship. Or maybe they're just an unbeliever trying to work their way through believing. And God's going to give you that opportunity. That we are the family of God. We take care of each other. We love each other. And um, we just like we love our family, our earthly family. So uh, let's look at Genesis uh, Three, two scripture verses right now. Let's look at Genesis uh, 12, 1 and 2. Tim, would you go to Genesis 12, 1, and 1 through 3? And then, um, uh, Richard, would you read Romans uh, 12, 10 through 16? And matter of fact, why don't we all go to Romans and then Tina just go to Genesis, okay? Is that all right? That would be a little bit quicker here. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Romans 12, 1 through 16. Go ahead, Tina.
Lori, as she began to have revelation of the love of God and how Father God loves her, her husband abused her, her father, father abused her, and she had a horrible life situation. Had a first baby at 15, 14, 15, and 16. Had three little little babies. They're all serving God today, by the way. So praise the Lord. All right, I just connected with them on Facebook. So they're in ministry. I mean, I'm so happy, I'm so excited. But anyway, um, I remember Lori, as she was just starting to have a revelation of God's love, she wanted to go back to the Thunderbird, which was the local bar where she hung out before she became a Christian. And we said, okay, Lori, that's a great thought, but let's, let's, let's help you mature and understand what you believe before you go back in there, because I was afraid she was going to get sucked right back into that old life, because there were a lot of her friends were in that place, amen? And she knew a lot, I mean, she did a lot of... Um, anyways, so we just kind of protected her. So we have to come out from, like, with, like Abraham had to do, had to come out of his old family, his old identity, and become a new identity in Christ. Amen. Let's go to Romans uh, chapter uh, 12, Richard, uh, 10 through 16. He said, uh, Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one, uh, one another above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, uh, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who you who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless and, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of lower position. Do not do not be conceited. Amen. So treat each other like what? Family, right? Devoted to one another, love one another, spend time with one another. That's why when people don't show up at church, I kind of go through the list every Sunday after church. Who's not here? And I find out, well, Brad and Crystal are in Chicago because her mother, grandmother's 80th birthday is today. That's why they're not here today. You know, and I, and I just put out a list, you know. Glenda wasn't here last week because our daughter's wedding, and our granddaughter's wedding. And I'm, so I know that, and I want to... I, I know uh, Joe slept in last week because I called him. And, asked him, right? <laughs> and you know, because we're family, right? I, I just want to make sure everybody's happy and, and th that the enemy's not taking you away from the fold, if you will, right? So if I'm devoted to one another, I should, call, I mean, I sh as a shepherd, I should be concerned about you, right? And that's what I do, and, and we should do that for each other. And we're going to go there as a family. We're going to we're going to take that what I do, and we're going to spread it out to everybody. Do that, all right? Do you understand? Because we all should be caring and loving for one another. All right. Let's move on. Um, part um, number two: We are servants. Okay. We are servants. Now let's look at a few scripture verses. Um, Tina, would you go to First Corinthians seven twenty-two through twenty-four? Um, Libby, would you get Galatians one ten? And Joe, you want to read? Or Dion, would you move Philippians 2, 5 through 11? And that should be on a servant. Actually, what's on your notes is different than what I'm giving you. There's more scripture verses on your notes because I figure you're going to read those when you go home anyway. So I'm going to give you other notes to look at, okay? It's, it, it's, 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 there's many more scripture verses about these different things. Okay, so you have that 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Uh, you can write that in your notes so you can keep up with this and reread it at home. Chapter 7, 22 through 24. Tina has that one. And Galatians 1, uh, 10 is Labiche. And Dion, Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Tina, would you read that one first? 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 20 through, 22 through 24. Paul the Apostle So we should serve in any condition. There's no difference in our position. So let's say, let's take it to 19 or 2015. You work at a place or you go to school or whatever you do. You, you, you work for that boss. Work with him with all your heart. Serve him. You know, serve him with the idea that you're going to lead him to understand who God is. 
All right, read that again, Tina. Read that first part. For the one who is a slave when called to faith in the Lord is the Lord's free person. So if you're a slave, if you're a slave, then you're free. So we are bound by sin before we became believers. Follow me for a second. Everybody look here. You follow me. You were a sinner. You were bound by that sin. Now you're free. You're no longer bound by that sin. We're free from that sin. You don't have to go back into that sin. All right? Go ahead. And then? Similarly, the one who was free when Paul is Christ's slave. So now, we don't, we're not slave to what we were before our sin, but now we're a slave. Voluntarily, we are slaves to Christ, a servant. Because you remember the story of Matthew where Jesus washed the disciples' feet. You remember that? Last Supper, right before he was going to be crucified. He took the disciples in the room and he took on this, this says, he took on, and then you look at the Greek, it's the very lowest servant. And he put on a garment, he put on a, 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 a towel, if you will, and he washed each one of the disciples' feet. He said, this is how you're going to act. Because what happened? They're going to have knowledge. They're going to have the power of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be easy to lord over people. And he was saying, listen, it's not about that. It's not about the power that's going to come through you. When you lay hands on the sick, look at Paul, uh, Peter, they, 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 they heal the sick on the way to the temple. Right? Silver and gold have not such have power of God. Uh, I, silver and gold uh, have I none, but such as I have in the name of his rise up and walk. And that crippled man, strength came to his legs, and he began to jump up and shout. Don't be proudful about what God is going to use you in. He said, you will be a, a servant to everybody. Don't exalt yourself because it's so easy. We're supposed to, in, that, in his church family, that's what we need to do. We need to be serve each other so God can be glorified. Amen? And when you're at work and you lay hands on your boss because he's sick and he recovers from that. I remember when Andy was in uh, Nicaragua and they went to a, uh, the college there. They were teaching. Uh, they had permission to go in. The professor let him come in. The professor was sick or, or was Blind or couldn't hear, one or two. Blind or couldn't hear, one eye. And God healed him in front of all the students. Right? He didn't go, woo, he didn't, he didn't do none of that. He put, this, he put the pet presser aside and he went and talked to the rest of the students about who Jesus is. Amen? That's serving. That's God giving God all the glory. It wasn't me that did that, it was Jesus that did that. Amen? And so we serve. Then we serve each other in this community here, within the family of believers. How do we do that? I think it's going to get to the point where we're going to be selfless and begin to serve each other in a way that will just blow your minds, even as you can think right now. Right? How about if we do this? What, if, what do you need and what do you have to help support someone? What did God bless you with, right? Because God gave you everything, you know? And then we serve and, and help each other that have needs. Just in that group right here. Let's just start here. At least love on each other. Tina's like, yeah, because we're talking about it. We're talking about, oh, we need a new car. Tina and I need a new car. But what if we don't get a new car? And what if we just, uh, you know, uh, borrow a car? But Andy's moving up in June. So he said, Andy said, Dad, you know, don't get a new car. I have, we'll have two cars. We won't like we won't need the second one. So we'll just use one as a community car. We'll just use, we'll, if we need it, we'll just use it. So that way I don't have to buy a $14,000 car or whatever cars cost nowadays. But, you know, it's crazy. That's living and serving one another, right? I have one person shaking their head. This is revolutionary. This is the family of God. This is church. You remember, yeah, in Acts, how they served each other. Why did Ananias and Sapphira get in trouble? Because the church was bringing money and gifts, selling property, selling things so they could give it to the disciples so the gospel could be spread, right? And a nice bar says, hey, listen, that's what we did. We're going to sell our property. We sold it, but we're going to keep some for ourselves, which is fine. Like Peter said, hey, it's your property anyway. But they lied because they wanted to be glory to themselves. They said, we sold our property for this much. We give you the whole amount. And everybody's going, ooh, good job. All right. So, and then all of a sudden, boom, they, were, they lied to the Holy Spirit. And they were they struck. I haven't seen that happen in church lately, but I'm just saying. We, the, the whole thing is that we should serve one another, love each other, care for one another, and then provide for others' needs. And it's just something that will change because we are selfish, selfish church and American church. We're a selfish church. 
We want everything for ourselves. We are only, come on, every shape. You know what I'm saying? We are, but how do we change it? Because if we change it, we, if we're family and we serve one another, then guess what's going to happen? We will start doing those things that are different than what the world tells us we should do. Save money for your 401k. Put it in a way for you when you're older. Blah, blah, blah. And Jesus said, if you trust God with all your heart, he said, I'll provide everything you need. If the flowers are clothed and if this is happening, I mean, he's going to give you what you need. So... It's in the Word. I mean, I'm not saying anything different. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, Galatians, uh, the beach. Galatians uh, 1.10. Now, am I trying to win the favor of men or of God? Do I seek to please men? If I were still seeking popularity with men, I should not be a bond servant of Christ and his son. Amen. So, say, if you're trying, in your mind, now, in your mind, if you're starting to seek the approval of men, we, listen, we all want pats on the back. Hey, Libby, you're doing a good job. Thank you. Appreciate your service. Thank you for cooking all that food. I mean, you did a wonderful job. All right, so we, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, because we need, we, we need that. It's part of, of how we're designed. But if all she was doing in that service was to get a pat on the back, then she had a wrong motive. And she's not giving the glory. She said, no, I like, I like, sir. I love doing this stuff, you know? And I want to do it for God. So then she gives, her, her reward is giving it to God, not for herself. That's what God tells us to do. And then he will reward you. And he'll give you all that you need. And sometimes it says in the word of God, even more than what you need. But we're not saying what we seek. We're just saying to give him glory in what we do. We serve one another. Amen. So go to the next verse, Philippians 2. Who had that one? Dion? Yeah. Say it's a lot with Dion. Look at, look at verse uh, verse 6. Uh, go back to verse 6. It says, Who, being the very nature of God, did not consider himself equal with God, something to be grasped. So Jesus said, even though he could have, came in his glory and his power, he came as a servant. I don't want to, I mean, he said, I'm not, he could be equal with God, but he said, I'm not going to be equal with God. So I can do the work that my Father set me to do. And that's to serve everyone and take on the very, uh, just take out sin so he can be totally forgiven, so he can be a perfect sacrifice. He humbled himself to be a servant. And that's, come on, tell me, it's hard to do that. And our, in our person, in, our, in, our, in who we are, it's like we want to be recognized. Oh, oh I love when people call me pastor. But I'd probably like it better if you just call me Bob. We can't do that. Why? Because we're just equal. I'm just called to a position. Amen? I'm not better than you. God has called me to do this. Amen? And God's called me to do certain things too. There's other people that have callings on their life too. Everybody, I think everybody has a calling. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a reason. We just have to figure what it out. But it is we work together. Amen? Okay? To be a servant. Missionary. Okay, so... Let's go to number three in my notes here. And it says we are to be missionaries, okay? Uh, missionaries, we are to set, uh, we are set by God to restore all things to him through Jesus Christ. Right? We are set by God to the world to restore the world, the brokenness, the, the hurt, the pain, the disappointments, life stuff. Amen? Families. I mean, sometimes I, I know I have a perfect father and I, I'm comfortable with that now. But my father wasn't the perfect father. <laughs> it's like, yeah, either was mine. Alright? And so when my example, when I begin to know who Father God is, it changed the way I thought about things. And so I want to please my father. And he said, I'm not going to let you alone. I'm going to give you some power. I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you this Holy Spirit. How many spread 
John, did you say it, Sharon? I think writer Andy did. John uh, 14, 15. Is like, anybody read that lately? My favorite part of it, read that. How, why did the Holy Spirit say it? How was he supposed to help us and understand things? How was he supposed to empower us? It's all there in that chapter. Jesus didn't have, there's nothing hidden about how we're supposed to be a, a church, a family of servant missionaries. It's nothing secret. It's in the Word. That's why we're going back to reteaching the gospel and saying we're supposed to be in the very image of Christ. Amen. Let's get that up. What are the Beatitudes? How are we supposed to live? How are we supposed to love? And how are we supposed to forgive? Read the Beatitudes. It'll change your life. So when I read the Word of God now, and I'm reading, uh, Tina's reading now through Gospels over and over, so she's reading them through uh, Easter, and I'm reading a different portion of Scripture. But when I read the Gospels, I, my attitude now is like, okay, Jesus, you are saying these things to the disciples, but I really think that you're talking to me. How am I supposed to be like this? Because it, it's not in my thinking. I, I, I want to have a successful ministry. I want to build a church. I want to have a pretty building. You know, I mean, all those things are all great. But it's like, I, I want to take the eye out of it and say, what do you want, God? And this is what God said to me. This is what he wants. This is why I'm so passionate about this. He says, we're a church, not this building, us. That we're a family. And we have to work on this part, right? Trying to be a family. And then we have to work on this part, serving each other so we can serve the world. So we, if we can serve each other here, and then we can be an example to the world, or can we just go out there and just start serving people and loving people? And, you know, this one I like, I mean, not about you, but when the Holy Spirit, when you're communicating with God and the Holy Spirit's talking to you, and you're out in the street, you're talking, it seems like God will just illuminate something to you. You'll see a person or a situation, and I don't know how it happens in your life, but for me, I like I see something, and I have I have to go talk to them. I have to I have to engage in whatever they're doing and figure out how can I how is God going to help me or how can I be helpful or bring bring that situation to God. So sometimes it's just saying hi, and then the conversation starts. Or maybe it's just meeting a need, like if the Holy Spirit says uh, pay for their lunch if you're at a, at a restaurant, and uh, and my wife knows I just pay for their lunch. I don't say. I don't say, hey, look what we did, you know. We are the Castrovas, and we go to Capital City Church, and we want you to know that we did this for you. We don't do that at all. We tell the waitress, we just want to pay for the lunch. I don't care how much it is. Bring me to the street, and that's it. This job is paid. Why? Because I felt the Holy Spirit tell me to do that. They, and I, I don't, maybe someday I'll find out, okay? Right now, I don't know. But maybe they were just, you know, they were, they were there, there for the last... I don't know, their last dollars, maybe they're in their, I don't know what their situation, I don't know what the situation, I don't care. What I didn't care is that I was obedient to the Holy Spirit at that moment. Right? 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 And I remember we were at the youth, we went to the youth convention a couple years ago with the youth group, and uh, we were at um, Eau Claire, right? Was it? Um, La Crosse. And so we were at, the, I, the kids were eating burgers and, and uh, pizza, and so I said, Tina, we were a little older, so we said, let's get them a good meal, so we went to, uh, uh, Perkins, I think, there, right? So I said, okay, at least I get some green vegetables or something better for them to eat. Uh, and there was a gentleman in there. We were like the only ones in the restaurant, and there was a gentleman in there. And he was a truck driver, and he, you know, we were loud. I mean, kids were loud, you know, it was kind of in a restaurant with us and them. And of course, they put us right next to him, you know. So I thought we were disruptive a little bit. I noticed that. Maybe the host was showing me. And so I just paid for his lunch, you know. And of course, he knew that we, we did it because we were like the only ones in the restaurant. Uh, but we just, no, enjoy your day. We just want to bless you. That's it. You know, we didn't make a big deal out of it. But you know, one of those kids today, one of those kids that were in that group it, it went to Africa last year. And God used them mightily to see people uh, saved and healed and delivered from demonic oppression. It was amazing. So I just think maybe just that little act what you do, you know, be as has more ramifications than we really realize. Amen? So we are missionaries. We are told to be missionaries. We have a, a gospel message to share with the world. So let's look at a few scripture verses. And uh, first, uh, I'm sorry, John, do you know, our, our angel, would you go to John chapter 1, verse 14? And, and Jason, would you go to John 20, 21? And, um, Yolanda, you want to do Colossians 1, 19? And Ramey, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21. I will give you these 
scripture verses afterwards if you want them. Or, or, I hope you're writing them down in your notes. Because obviously they're different from the one that's in your notes, so that's all okay. Okay, John 1, 14. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. And then, uh, Jason, John 20, 21. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Okay, as the Father has sent me, I am sending who? Who's you? Us. All right. Who is he talking to right there, though? The disciples. Disciples. So let's break it down. He says, I am sending you. He says, I'm sending his disciples. That's what that literally means. But we know because we are also his disciples because in Matthew 28, we are to make disciples, to see those the original disciples made disciples, and those disciples passed the message down to us through the ages, and now we are his disciples, so we are sending us also. Exactly right. We are missionaries. Colossus 119. It was the Father's good pleasure for the fullness to dwell in Him. And He says that we walk in His glory. So think of how, how can we be, okay, if I had a chart, what would be the perfect Christian? What would we put there? If we, we accomplish uh, the perfect sonship, the perfect missionary, the perfect servant, the, the perfect family, loving and caring for, what would, that, what, would that, what would that look like? Christian would be, boom, dash one. What would it be? Be like Jesus. Two, be like Jesus. Three, be like Jesus. Four, be like Jesus. You're getting the point, right? We're, we're like Jesus. That's what we're supposed to be like. Well, how, how do I know to be like Jesus? There's only one way to know how to be like Jesus is to be like Jesus. No, to be in His Word. So when we see the teachings of the disciples and we see Jesus' own words, that's how we become in the image. Because God created us. Now, follow this for a second. This is powerful. In the beginning, God created a man and a woman in His image. Correct? Genesis 3. In His image. Then sin happened. And no longer we were in His image. All this time through history, Jesus came to restore us into His image. So we're walking in his image. Alright? So all I mean, there's a lot more to that, but I mean just say that's just breaking it down. We are uh, his image. So now as Christians, now I know there's all varieties of Christians. People use that title. Alright? And I know that has a lot of good and bad connotations to it. Alright? I know that. The purity, the, the the essence of what we're supposed to be as believers is in his image. Okay? Now, we falter in that. That's why Jesus reminds us. That's why we have to be taught. And that's how we have Bible studies. That's why we have preaching on Sundays. We encourage each other so we can walk in His image. Because our mission, our purpose on earth is to take that lost and broken person out there and help them become in the image of Christ too. Jesus can forgive that hurt. Jesus can forgive those pains. Jesus can set your mind free. Jesus can heal your broken body. Amen? He said he came to set the captive free. What are we captive by sin, right? We're captive. We're chained by our sin, by our past, by all the things that we've done wrong. And Jesus said, I can come and break that chain. We are chained. You know, you ever see a, um, I just thought of this. You ever see a, a, a what do you call it? A lock a, a cutter? A lock cutter? Say you got a big red handle, like one that had big red handles, has small little teeth, and then it has, you know, you just, you just break it, right? A lock cutter, right? That's what we are. We are lock cutters. Take those chains off of people's lives. Say, Jesus died, and all his blood was shed that you could be forgiven. And your sins, even though they were dark as scarlet, they could be white as snow. You might have heard this before, right? This is nothing new. This is the image that we're supposed to walk in. If we're family, and we're servants that our job, if you will, our purpose, our reason for even believing anymore is now because we want to share this. 
So let's say, uh, let's say you're a chemist, you're, you went to college, you spent eight years in school, you have your master's degree, you have your doctorate, and now you, know, you come to the full knowledge of this. Well, continue to serve. Be a chemist, be the best chemist. I remember those, uh, the Chinese couple that came over, they're, they're, they're taking green tea extract, and I'm probably not telling these secrets, but they're doing something to try to preserve uh, meat more naturally, and foods, instead of all the chemicals that have been put in, like meat, and we you know, we're all going back to natural stuff now. We're called, we actually called a farmer this past week, and we're gonna buy a cow that is grass-fed for the, for the Christmas present for my kids, instead of buying Christmas present, we're just gonna buy a cow. And uh, yeah, so we'll have a cow for next year, whatever. That's our Christmas present. But, uh, but we have to have a grass-fed cow. We want it natural. We don't want all the chemicals. We don't want all the injections. We're trying to right, It costs a little more money. And so, oh, so we, we said, well, let's buy a whole cow. Or Amy's going to know that. Everybody's going to know what they're doing oh. for Christmas. Well, they're, oh. Amy's not here, so. Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth. Hey, Amy. But anyway, that's our Christmas present this year. So, uh, uh, why did I say all that? Oh, because I, oh, sorry, man, fuck. Thank you. But the reason we get into those things, be the best chemist in glorifying God. Don't deny Christ because they say, well, you can't be a scientist and be a Christian. That's not true. You just stand your ground. Amen? You don't leave your position. No, you, you, you are, your identity is in God. And no matter what you do, don't, don't compromise that. Don't even hide it. Don't hide it. I mean, people are losing. Now, people are losing their jobs. I remember the pastor, that his wife came up, lost her job because she had Christian things in her office space, and she wouldn't take it down. No, no, I'm a believer. And they they got all their junk on their office wall, and they have all their junk on their office wall, and she lost her job. So, hey, God provided. And, and a few months later, it was a little rough, but a few months later, she got a job. God will take care of you. Amen. He knows what you need. Never compromise your identity. My father is in heaven. Want to meet him? This is my brother Jesus. Amen? And the Holy Spirit is with me. I'm not going to, let's not compromise that. And as a family, we can work on that together, trying to, to overcome those things that we deal with, right? And la the last thing is, is on the bottom of this. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Go ahead. Second Corinthians. Uh, where that? Oh, great, great. Second Corinthians chapter five, uh, chapter 5, verse 16 through 21. He knew we're going to stumble. He said, I know you can't do this. I know so I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's going to lead you to truth. He's going to lead you to understanding. He's going to give you power to do this, to make the appeal through us. Amen. That's our responsibility. We're going to work towards that. Okay? We are missionaries. That's who we are. If, you know, we always thought, when I grew up as a, in a church, I always thought the missionary was a guy I gave my $25 a month to, and he went to some country. Right? They went overseas. They went, you know, and I used to cry every time the missionary came. Even when they, when they came a few weeks ago, I was just like crying. I said, God, just, you know, use them, you know, whatever. But then my thinking has changed over the years. Because what I was thinking, I had to build up a church in Madison, Wisconsin to be successful. I was, I was doing it. 
And then I realized a few years ago it was God that built the church, not me. Now, I knew that. I read that scripture. I understand that. But it was like I was doing all what I could to build the church, and I couldn't do it. And then I realized that it's not just we're not building a church here. We're building a missionary station. A place to teach, a place to encourage, a place to worship together. Amen. Praise God together. I can't wait till we get a bigger worship team and all that. I love all that music. I just love doing it. Um, I like when the kids come up and dance around the church. They just do it naturally, right? You don't have to tell them to go dance. They just do it, right? I can see all the ladies in here dancing in front of God. <laughs> I remember one of the first churches I went to, we had, it was all the guys that danced. It was none of the women. All the women stayed in the pews and all the guys who ran around the church. It was crazy. I didn't... It was fun. I mean, I couldn't wait to get to church to see what Brother uh, Gary would do next. You know, it was, it was just fun. You know, we had a guy that played the train, uh, trombone back then, and uh, and uh, we would they would do worship songs. They call it Jericho March. I don't know. You know, back in some other uh, outside of America, they're doing this now. You know, in America, we're just too sophisticated for this. But uh, Brother, he would he play that trombone. I he had sounds come out of that thing. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to play music. I don't. Even, I played a radio and a CD player and a computer. MP3, whatever. Uh, but he would play that trombone, and we would all get excited, you know? I don't know why, but just when he prayed that thing, it was like the Spirit of God just anointed him, and we'd march around the parking lot even. We'll watch it. Praising God and walk around the parking lot. If they had it on a video, we'd probably be, uh, you know, in a Looney Tune band or whatever. But it was fun. I mean, it was fun being in church. That's why I tell uh, uh, Brad and Crystal, I said, listen, take those kids downstairs, teach them about Jesus, but let them have fun. Don't make church a boring thing for them. Let them have excitement. So maybe uh, we'll see. You know, I'm thinking this: as we are, are as we begin to serve our, our each other in our community, and as we begin to take the message out, we're going to see things like Peter and John on the way to the temple, lay hands on the sick and they recover. And you bring that that that, guy, that crippled guy in the church. You talking about having a fun church time, right? Come on. God healed me on the way to church this morning. I'm, Woohoo, let's have some fun. I'm ready to break loose anytime, so you guys just you want to follow me, come on. I am, because I, I get, I don't know, I'm passionate, I love God, and I get excited. To, I mean, I know sometimes when I come in here, it's like, oh, here we go again. I've got to change all the cores around, got to fix the computer, we've got to make sure there's toilet paper in the bathroom, I do all that stuff. But, you know, I'm just happy to be here. Not because of the building, because I know you guys are coming. Amen? And I can't wait to hear the testimonies of what God's doing or going to do in our midst. Amen? Last one. All right. Are you ready? i got five more minutes. Is that okay? Ugh. All right. Is, uh, I don't want to end this. You know, I really don't. It says that the church is a, is a community of disciples. We call to equip and to be equipped learners of Jesus. So we look at disciples. We say, I'm a disciple of Jesus. You know what that really means? It means I'm a learner of Jesus. Same word, if you will. Disciple and learner. And who's responsible for learning? Joe, you're going to college right now to be an accountant. So who's responsible for your learning your accountant stuff? That's right. That's right. You are. Now the teacher teaches you stuff. They show you books. They give stuff. But who's responsible for learning? You are. We are. We are learners of God. Are we supposed to be learning? If we're not learners of God, we're going the other direction. If you're not happy about reading your Bible or at least getting in there and learning or studying something out, I get, I get excited when I learn. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not fun to be around. You know, I'm just happy. I mean, God shows me something new, you know? Like putting this all together, like putting this together right here. This, this seems really simple, doesn't it? This is what, this is like, hey, this is no big deal. We're, we're, we are the church. That's what it says in the back of your notes. We are the church. We already know that. We are a family. We're servants. We're mission. Okay, this is, this is what this is what I love about you guys. See, you can learn this straight up right away. You don't have to unlearn church. You don't have to unlearn all the junk that I learned and then have to relearn it. This is this is the way. Okay, I'm not gonna sit here. This is the way it's supposed to be. I almost said that because I'm not saying I have the right way. All right. All I'm saying this seems a lot better. That I encourage you to have the very image of Christ in you, so you can be a missionary to your world around you. Amen. And then love each other here. And take care of each other here. Right? <coughs> Come on. We are the church. We are the power of God. Amen? How many want to be more of a church? Well, let me say it this way. Who wants to be more in the image of Christ? 
Come on, raise your hands. Let's stand up. Let me, let me close. We got some organ music going on here, or some tambourines. I need some music. And um, we have, okay, you got some tambourines over there? It's a trombone or something? I'm, I'm excited. We are, you are, I am the church of God. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do His work in the world today. Not next week, not next year, it's today. And as you walk in that image, the power of God is going to flow through you and you're going to see miracles after miracles. Maybe some of those miracles are your stuff that you need in your own life. Let's start there. That's what I'm thinking that God's doing. Let's start right here in this room. We need the power of God. We need the image of God. Maybe we need to start with, maybe I need to just ask Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Maybe I already asked Jesus to be my Lord, my, uh, my Savior, but I never made Jesus the Lord of my life. There's a difference. See, as Lord of life, I willfully become a servant of God. I willfully say, yes, I am a bond servant. I want to serve you. I freely serve you, God. That's the problem. I think that's the problem, essence of the church issue today in America. Maybe across the world. I don't know, because I haven't been across the world. I just know here. Okay? And some of you can attest to that. that come from the country. We are not willing to put... Oh, yeah, we'll put money in, in the missionaries. We'll give money every week, every month. Yeah, you go. Let me, you go. Go. I'm not going to go, but you go. These are two areas right here. We understand family, maybe. But to freely serve God as a servant, as a, it says slave. I know I'm slave to sin, but I'm slave to God now, willfully. And then... This part is really the hard part because what we have required, what we have done in our minds is that we've caused the pastor and the teacher and the prophet and the evangelist, we, we want them to teach us, but we don't want to be learners ourselves. But once we become learners of God ourselves, and then we come in encouragement here in the word in the families we gather together on Sunday, it, it changes the atmosphere in here. We don't have to pump you up and say, oh, come on, let's worship God. You are already worshiping God. That's what I can't wait. It's my heart. People come in, flooding into the church so we can worship God together and give Him glory for what He's done for us. But sometimes we don't, God has done nothing for us because we haven't been in, we haven't done any of this. So it's like we just come next week because it's out of obligation. Come on, man. am I preaching good or not? Is this right? Is this right? You know what I'm saying? This is honest. This is honest. If we want to change, if we want the church to change, if we want to change because we're a church, then we need to realize our identity in God. That's what we've been teaching in the last three weeks. This is this is where we're going, folks. We're gonna learn. We're gonna learn. We're gonna teach more about this. We're gonna teach more about each one of these in the weeks to come because we want to be the very image of Christ. And 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 Ephesians promise us that if we teach and if we disciple, that we come we come into the fullness of Christ. I don't know what that is. Can I be honest with you? I don't know what that means to be in the fullness. I want that though. I want my life to be in the fullness of Christ. I want to serve Him, love Him, love others, not have any prejudice, not think about people in angry ways or, or mean ways in my mind or my heart. I just want to have the purity of God in my heart so I can be the very image of Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes. Let's lift up your hands towards God. Just like a surrendering. I'm surrendering my life to you, Lord. I remember Pastor Joe Stenson doing this to me. The first time I ever did this was, I still remember that day, like, oh yeah. I, I, I do that. I surrender my whole life to you. I surrender my will to you, Lord. Come on, tell them. I surrender my will to you. I surrender my future to you, Lord. I surrender my worldly possessions to you, Lord. I surrender my heart to you, Lord.
Please forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from my unrighteousness. Make me holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness. Hallelujah. Just one more minute. Just pray where you're at. Just one more minute, and then I want to pray a blessing over you. Lord, pray. Lord, I just give it all. I want to be. I want to be a family. God, that you created us to be. I want to be a, a servant like you want me to be a servant. I want to, I want to be a missionary. Oh, Lord, I want, to, I, want to, I want your image to shine through me so much that the world will see you and not me. That they'll see the love that the Father has for you and not me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all to you, Lord. All to Jesus I surrender. Hallelujah. Can we sing that? Sing that song. I surrender. Whatever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, for things you maybe you're struggling with or you need help, like, just come up here and Tina and I will pray for you. And, every heart that's in this room, Lord, this, this family, this family of believers that are working together to serve you with all our heart, soul, mind, body, and strength, to help us to be, or help, help us, Holy Spirit, to be obedient to the leading, your leading us every day, so we can be servant missionaries to the world around us. Father, I thank you for that. Father, thank you. As we bow our knees to you, Lord, as we bow our hearts to you, Lord, do, can I do something? Can we just do this? I just feel strong. I'm going to do it because I feel... Can we just bow our knees? Can we just kneel down before God's presence? Just for a second. Come on. Oh, Lord. This is a, I will bow down. I must serve. We willfully... If you can't do this, that's fine. Just stand. Just, just those that can. Father, we willfully bow to you willfully bow to your son Jesus. We bow to you, Holy Spirit. Use us. Cause us to be a mighty family for you, God, that loves and that love that we have and share in this room, God, and, and with our other family members that are not here, God, that would just illuminate your love to the world around us, Lord. And let us see, Father, let us see, let us, let our heart break as your heart breaks for the, the sinful world that's dying and without you, Lord. Let us, let our heart break for those that are so far from you, God. Let us see as you see, God. Let us serve as Jesus served. Let us be in the fullness of Christ's image. And Father, I thank you for that. Father, We'll be sure to give you all the glory and all the praise. And Father, because if it wasn't for Jesus, we could do none of this. We couldn't even love each other. It's impossible to love without Jesus. But thank you, Lord, for allowing him to die for my sins and the sins of this world. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, Father, I ask that you bless this, this family. Grow in your image, Lord. Thank you so much.